welcome to this lecture number 11 in which we will continue with the 1D groundwater flow uh, in an unconfined aquifer. And firstly, let us consider the case of a 1D groundwater unconfined groundwater flow between two water bodies having a discharge with a discharge in the uh, vertically downward direction. And uh, here we know that when there is a 1D groundwater flow, the, at the obviously the flow is in the x direction and in this case the governing equation will be d square h by d x square and since the flow is only in the x direction, so therefore the uh, second uh, order partial derivative terms in the y and z direction they will not be there and this will be equal to minus 2 r by k, where uh, r is the rate of recharge uh, and the, this is in the vertically downward direction and k is the aquifer permeability or the hydraulic conductivity. So, this is the governing equation and uh, so this equation if we, uh, I am sorry, so I made a small this one. So, this is a second partial derivative of h square. Uh, so, this is d square by d x square of h square is equal to minus 2 r by k. So, now let us integrate this uh, governing equation twice. So, we get h square will be equal to minus r by k x square plus C 1 x plus C 2. So, here the C 1 and C 2 are the constants of integration. Now, let us apply the boundary conditions. So, the boundary conditions so at the upstream boundary upstream boundary. So, x is equal to 0, h is equal to h 0. Therefore, so h 0 is equal to C 2. So, this is the first boundary condition. The second boundary condition that is the downstream boundary at the downstream boundary, we have x is equal to L and at uh, that location the head H is equal to H 1 which is the the head, the ground water head in the downstream uh, water body. So, now, so therefore, here, so we get this H 1 square will be equal to minus R by k L square plus C 1 into L and C 2 is equal to H 0. So, therefore, here you can write down. So, this C 1 is equal to minus H 0 square minus H 1 square minus uh, r l square by k so this whole thing divided by l so therefore if we call this equation 1 Therefore, 
equation 1 becomes h square is equal to minus r x square by 2 or r by k x square minus of h 0 square minus h 1 square minus uh, r by k into L square. This divided by L this into x plus h 0 square. So, this is the expression for the square of the head, the ground water head in an unconfined aquifer having a 1 D flow between two water bodies, the upstream water body having a head of h 0 and the downstream water body having a head of h 1. And uh, there is also a vertically downward uh, recharge in the vertically downward direction uh, uh, with an intensity of R and the aquifer is uh, homogeneous isotropic with a hydraulic conductivity of K. The distance between the upstream and downstream aquifers is L. I am sorry, the upstream and downstream water bodies is L. Here, as you can see from the from the figure, due to this constant or uh, uniform rate of recharge over in the vertically downward direction, the water table shows a hump somewhere in the middle, and where the this H value is a maximum equal to h max and uh, so uh, from there the water table dips slightly towards the upstream water body to the left and then more towards the downstream water body to the right of this uh, and this this uh, section is known as the water divide so this is known as the water divide, wherein this h is the maximum, the ground water head is maximum and the uh, to the left of that, the water will be flowing towards the upstream water body and to the right of that, the ground water will be flowing towards the downstream water body. And now, let us and uh, this uh, the water divide, so let us denote the distance of this water divide at x is equal to a from the upstream uh, water body. So, now let us find out an expression for this uh, the distance a of the water divide from the upstream water body and uh, we know that the expression is uh, So, this is the expression and if we take the derivative of h with respect to x and equate that derivative to 0. So, that is that will give the condition for maxima uh, that is uh, h is equal to h max. So, uh, we will get the expression for x. So, we know that at x is equal to a h is equal to h max and d h by d x is equal to 0. So, this is the condition for maxima. So, therefore, let us uh, uh, differentiate this expression. So, that is uh, 2 h into d h by d x this is equal to 0. So, this and here let us substitute because this is a d h by d x which is 0. So, therefore, we are uh, equating it to 0 and in the right hand side and the in place of x we have to substitute the value of a. 
So, therefore, here on the right hand side we get minus r by k into a square minus this is uh, h 0 square minus h 1 square minus r by k into l square this divided by l into a plus h 0 square. So, therefore, So, we get, so this is r by k a square which is equal to h 0 square minus h 0 square minus h 1 square minus r by k l square into divided by l into a. So, if you substitute this, if we uh, simplify this, after simplifying, so here we will get the we get and obviously, so here we can uh, you can cancel out 1 a here and uh, so when we are cancelling out this a so obviously here there will be a here so after simplifying we get this a is equal to l by 2 minus k by r into h 0 square minus h 1 square divided by 2 l. So, this is the expression for expression for the distance of uh, water divide. from the upstream water body. Okay. So, now we will uh, get the uh, what we will do is let us find out the the expressions for this uh, the flow from the water divide from to the left of the water divide as well as to the right of the water divide and obviously at the water divide there is no flow. Now, let us uh, write down, so this is uh, the, the flow per unit width, so flow per unit width that is q x is given by minus k into h into d h by d x and in this case, so this is minus k and uh, so h into d h by d x is given by that is minus r x by k. minus so here we get uh, this is a uh, h 0 square minus h 1 square minus r l square by k this whole thing divided by 2 l so this is the expression for q x and here in this case we are uh, taking the uh, this one the uh, substituting the value of uh, uh, 
h into d h by d x and multiplying it with uh, minus k. So, we get this expression. So, now if we simplify this, so we get this q x will be equal to r into x minus l by 2 plus k divided by 2 l into h 0 square minus h 1 square. So, this is the expression for q x. Now, to get the upstream and the downstream uh, the, uh, the flow per unit width into the upstream water body and the downstream water body, we need to substitute x is equal to 0 to get the flow per unit width into the upstream water body and uh, we need to get x is equal to L, we need to substitute x is equal to L to get the expression for the flow per uh, unit width into the downstream water body. So, here you can write down this is the expression for flow per unit width in uh, one day unconfined flow unconfined steady flow steady ground water flow between two water bodies. So, now for the upstream water body q is equal to q 0 and which is simply given by substituting x is equal to 0 in this expression. So, therefore, this q 0 is given by minus r l by 2 plus k by 2 l into h 0 square minus h 1 square. Similarly, for the downstream water body, so for the upstream water body x is equal to 0 and for the downstream water body x is equal to L. So, therefore, this uh, q x uh, in this case q x is equal to q L which is equal to this is uh, r into L by 2 here x uh, in place of x we are substituting L r into L by 2 plus uh, k by 2 L into h 0 square minus h 1 square. So, therefore, this can be expressed as this q L is equal to q 0 plus R L. That means, the flow into the downstream water body obviously, it has to be more because there is more gradient. Uh, between the water divide and the downstream water body. So, that is uh, uh, obtained by adding this uh, the term the product of r into l the recharge intensity as well as the length the distance between the two water body upstream and uh, downstream water bodies to the uh, flow per unit width into the upstream water body. So, therefore, so here we get uh, this is the so, this uh, q 0, so this is the expression for expression for uh, flow per unit width into upstream water body and obviously, this is for say 1 d confined steady ground water flow. And uh, this is the expression for flow per unit width 
into the downstream water body and obviously this is also for 1D unconfined steady ground water flow. So, this is the expression for uh, this one. So, now we have uh, discussed this 1D ground water flow without uh, with recharge. Now, let us come to this uh, the la another case that is the 1D unconfined steady ground water flow without recharge. So, here we know that So, in this case, so let me draw the figure here. In this case, this is the bottom confining layer for the unconfined uh, aquifer and then there is a, an upstream water body and then this is the, the general ground here and then there is a downstream water body. So, this upstream water body as a head of H 0. So, this is the upstream water body and then this is the downstream water body has a head of H 1. So, this is the downstream water body and uh, here this is the ground level and obviously, since there is no recharge. So, the water table will simply we will uh, assume a curve, curved shape and uh, here x is equal to 0 and at the downstream end the x is equal to L. So, this is the, the distance L between the upstream and the downstream water bodies and uh, here. So, at any general point, so this is H and uh, Obviously, let us say at uh, this the at this general section x the discharge per unit with this q and this aquifer permeability. So, permeability aquifer permeability is equal to k. So, now here in this case the expression that is uh, in this case the governing equation will be simply that is uh, d square h square by d x square will be equal to 0 and therefore, if you differentiate this one twice or I am sorry, if you integrate this twice. So, after integrating we get h square is equal to C 1 x plus C 2 and again the conditions are there, the boundary conditions are are uh, at x is equal to 0, h is equal to h 0 and uh, at x is equal to L, h is equal to h 1. So, here, so therefore, so this is uh, 
H 0 square is equal to C 2 and H 1 square is equal to C 1 L plus C 2, C 2 in this case is H 0 square. Therefore, C 1 is equal to H 1 square minus H 0 square divided by L, which you can write this as minus H 0 square minus H 1 square divided by L. So, therefore, so this equation, if we call this uh, as a uh, if I call this as equation say 3, so this equation 3 becomes so h square is equal to minus of h 0 square minus h 1 square divided by L into x plus h 0 square or in other words h square minus h 0 square is equal to h 1 square minus h 0 square divided by L into x. So, this is the so so, this is the expression for hydraulic grade line. For one uh, D unconfined steady ground water flow between two water bodies. without recharge. So, it gets uh, simplified. So, therefore, uh, and uh, we can also write if you differentiate this So, the uh, we get this 2 h into d h by d x and uh, so that can be half of that term can be used uh, can be multiplied with k. So, we will get the, the discharge per unit length unit width. So, the discharge per unit width so that is q. So, this is equal to minus k h d h by d x. So, this is equal to minus k and h into d h by d x is simply given by it is h 1 square minus h 0 square divided by 2 L into So, that is the expression for uh, this h into d h by d x. So, therefore, the discharge per unit width. So, this is the expression for. So, this is the expression for the discharge per unit width. So, for uh, 1 d unconfined steady ground water flow between two water bodies without recharge. Okay. So, therefore, so thus we have uh, come to the end of the second chapter
that is an occurrence in the movement of uh, ground water. Now we will go to the third chapter that is the advanced well hydraulics and in this case specifically we will discuss with the, the uh, initially we will start with the flow through the wells and that too initially the steady flow through the wells. So, we are uh, entering the third chapter that is the well hydro advanced well hydraulics. So, this is chapter 3 of this uh, uh, NPTEL video course on groundwater hydrology. So, this chapter 3 is on uh, advanced well hydraulics. And uh, specifically, we will start with the steady flow through wells, steady flow into the wells. So, firstly, we will consider the uh, confined aquifer, wells in the confined aquifer, and then we will go for the wells in the unconfined aquifer. And uh, firstly, let me start with the, the basic uh, figure or the diagrammatic uh, representation of a well, which is used for uh, extracting ground water. So, this is the the well and uh, let us consider this well to be fully penetrating an aquifer. So, this aquifer may be a confined aquifer or, or an unconfined aquifer and in this case this is the ground level and uh, here what happens is. So, this is the, the water table, the original water table. So, this is the original water table which is uh, horizontal in this case and then because of the pumping. So, this water table will uh, show a depression like this and uh, this is known as the cone of depression. So, this is the cone of depression so this is the the steady rate of pumping from this well and obviously the flow is radially there is a radially symmetrical flow into this well and the diameter of this well Let us consider the diameter to be 2 r w and uh, here, so this is the water surface and this, this curve is known as the drawdown curve. Obviously, when there is no uh, pumping so, the original or the static water table is a horizontal uh, surface with no drawdown and no cone of depression and in this case suppose we have a, an observation well. Let us say this is one observation well and this is another observation well which we are uh, So, in this case, 
the drawdown in this observation well that is basically the head difference between the original water table and uh, the the depressed water table so this s is known as the drawdown and uh, the the maximum radius up to which this drawdown is felt so this is from the axis of the well is known as the radius of influence and uh, in this case here uh, say we may obviously so these are the strainers so basically well casing with uh, perforations so through which the ground water enters radially uh, in a radially inward flow and obviously so this is axis symmetric flow so it is symmetrical in all the directions uh, because uh, we are assuming the uh, aquifer tube to be homogeneous and isotropic and in this case of course i have considered this as an unconfined aquifer and the same thing can also be shown as a confined aquifer so this is the original uh, this is the water table that is uh, wt and uh, so these are the terminology here rw the well radius and this radius of influence so this is uh, generally denoted by r and uh, this is the impervious boundary and in this case the bottom impervious boundary of the aquifer and then this is the drawdown this is the drawdown curve and then this is the cone of depression and uh, this is a pumping well with a steady pumping rate of q and uh, these two are the observation wells so these uh, these are the observation wells and this is the the pumping well and it is also known as a discharge well so this is the typical sketch uh, indicating all the uh, terminology and let us consider first the steady flow into a well fully penetrating a confined aquifer let us consider steady confined ground water flow into a fully penetrating well in this case the well is penetrating for the entire depth of the confined aquifer so let us uh, draw the sketch here so this is the bottom impervious layer of the confined aquifer and uh, here so this is the the well in this case let us say this is the top confining layer of this confined aquifer and obviously so here the there are uh, strainers basically well casing with perforations and uh, so this is the confined aquifer and uh, here the total let us consider this as the ground level and uh, here let us consider the so this is the water table so 
So, this is the water table with the drawdown and the the total height of the water table with respect to the bottom confining layer of this uh, aquifer is h and uh, here the flow is radially inward flow and uh, by Dupit's assumptions, we are uh, assuming the streamlines to be horizontal and uh, this well which is fully penetrating the confined aquifer has a diameter of 2 R w and uh, this is the the radius of the influence is r and uh, at uh, any two general points. So, the drawdowns are uh, s 1 and this is h 1 and then say uh, for the second uh, one. So, this is uh, S2 and this is H2. And obviously, at the well, so this is uh, HW and this drawdown here is uh, SW. And at any general uh, point, the drawdown is S and the variable head is uh, denoted by small h. And this is the pumping well with the discharge that is uh, Q. So, this is uh, a fully penetrating well through a confined aquifer and then there is a steady ground water flow into this uh, confined aquifer and uh, obviously here this S 1. So, this is at a radius of uh, R 1 and similarly this S 2 the drawdown S 2 is observed at a, an observation well which is at a radial distance of R 2. And the uh, let the uh, thickness of this confined aquifer be B. And uh, obviously, the uh, this one that is uh, uh, so the radial direction is uh, the axis is uh, this one is radially uh, the there is a radially inward flow throughout and. Uh, so, these are the, so this is the drawdown curve which represents a piezometric surface. So, here this is the drawdown curve that is piezometric surface under pumping. So, now for such a well which is uh, having which is receiving a steady flow which is radially inward flow and then the flow is axis symmetric. So, the flow is symmetrical about the vertical axis of this uh, fully penetrating well. So, now let us write down the expression for the radial velocity V r and this is simply given by the Darcy's expression by Darcy's law. radial flow velocity that is V r is simply given by k into d h by d r. k is the aquifer permeability and then d h by d r is the hydraulic gradient. And uh, so, this is the expression for the velocity 
and if you multiply this by the area of flow, so in this we will get the expression for the day, the steady rate of pumping. So, this q is simply given by 2 pi r into b. So, this is the area of uh, flow for the radially inward flow into k into d h by d r. So, this is the area multiplied by velocity that will give the expression for the steady flow rate into this well. So, therefore, let us uh, uh, rewrite these terms. So, this is q divided by 2 pi k b into d r by r, this is equal to d h and this so we need to integrate between the appropriate limits. So, in this case the limits are between uh, say r 1 and r 2, the lower limit is r 1, the upper limit is r 2 and then similarly for the right hand side the lower limit is uh, h 1 and the upper limit is h 2. So, in this case we get, so this is q divided by 2 pi k b into natural log of r 2 by r 1. So, this is equal to h 2 minus h 1. So, if we rewrite this one, so this the expression for the steady flow rate is given by this is 2 pi k b into h 2 minus h 1 divided by natural log of r 2 by r 1. So, this is the expression for for uh, steady flow through a fully penetrating steady fully penetrating well in a confined aquifer. And this is generally known as the Thames equation after the hydraulic hydraulician Thames who initially proposed this uh, equation. So, and obviously, so this k into uh, this uh, b, so this can be replaced by this transmissivity t. So, if we know the transmissivity and then the, the depths of uh, the water table above the unconfined, uh, above the lower confining layer in two observation wells uh, and also the radial distance from the, the center of the, the vertical well axis. So, then uh, we can determine the expression for this uh, steady flow through the fully penetrating. Okay. Well, this will also be equal to the, the steady discharge which is given out by this, uh, which this well is giving out. So, in that uh, equilibrium condition, the amount of uh, the, the inflow which is uh, through the, the radially inver, inward direction that is equal to the pumpage, the rate of pumping through the this well. And, uh, So, in this case, so this h 1, the head at the observation well, the piezometric uh, head at the observation well is simply given by h minus s 1 and h 2 is equal to h minus s 2. So, therefore, and this k into b, 
is equal to t. So, therefore, we can write down this q is equal to 2 pi into the transmissivity or transmissibility multiplied by, so this is uh, S1 minus S2 divided by natural log of R2 by R1. So, this is another expression for the steady uh, flow into a fully penetrating uh, well through a confined aquifer. And uh, suppose we consider the extreme points, that means, so we consider the, the downstream extreme point, which is uh, the, the radial surface, the cylindrical the curved cylindrical surface of the well and the upstream extreme point, which represents the, uh, the point on the circle of influence which is at a radial distance of uh, r, the radius of influence. So, in that case, so uh, we get at the edge, at the extreme points, this uh, the drawdown s is equal to 0 and r 2 is equal to r, which is the radius of influence and uh, h 2 is equal to h at the cylindrical wall of the well this uh, s is equal to s w R 1 is equal to R w and H 1 is equal to H w. So, therefore, we can write down this q is equal to 2 pi into t into S w divided by natural log of R divided by R w. So, this is another expression, wherein if we know the drawdown in the well, the radius of influence as well as the well radius. So, then we can uh, and of course, the transmissibility, we can get the expression for the discharge through the, the steady flow rate through this uh, uh, fully penetrating well in a confined aquifer, which is uh, the same as the the rate at which the water is pumped out or through this well, because the flow is steady, obviously inflow is equal to outflow. So, in the next class, we will continue with the, the steady flow through an unconfined, uh, through a fully penetrating well in an unconfined aquifer. Thank you.